great to see all the familiar faces. It's been a while, right? And the new faces. Can't wait to get to know you. Can't wait to get to know every single one uh, of you here. So in the coming weeks, we're going to get to know each other. Uh, maybe even go for a coffee. Uh, me and Rabbi Jack do that when we have uh, availability. And so... First lesson of dating. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll definitely try yeah, we'll and reach out and get to know all the new people. Now, I did write a few points before we actually start with our first session, just so I make sure you know I clarify some things. I've had some questions uh, coming my way in regards to the series and what and how, so I'm going to mention a few things. So who is it for? People have asked me. So I said it's for anyone who's single. Couples, you can come together, you know, with the person that you're dating, but definitely not for married people. <laughs> this is, this series is for pre-marriage. We have something totally different that we work with couples that were uh, mentoring before the wedding and after. That's something totally separate. Right now, we're going to be focusing on dating and relationship before marriage. Can I, can I just say something? In case yes. you didn't see the flyer. We're doing a dating series. There's always someone like who's like, what are they talking about? <laughs> so we're, <laughs> we're doing a dating series, right? Part of dating is about being clear. So we'll speak about that in the future. Guys, we're doing a dating series. We're, showing, we're going to be speaking about the Jewish values of dating and are they relevant also, okay? That's going to be the focus for the next eight, ten uh, Taco Tuesdays. And, yes. Uh, there's lots oh. to talk about. Okay, take it away. Um, okay, now topics will be, you know, advertised every week. So every week, every time when I post the link to register, I would also try to include what we're hoping to cover in this week's session. Uh, so that way you have a bit more even understanding. Because dating and relationship is so broad, there's so much to talk about and so much to cover. In the previous years, we've done like a crash course in dating. It was six weeks. But then it ended up lasting three months because people wanted more and more and there was so much to cover and to talk and to discuss. So hopefully we would pack a lot in the next uh, few sessions. Uh, now let's see. Oh, if you miss one or a few sessions, does that mean you can't continue coming? Absolutely not. You can miss. Obviously, all the information is very, very valuable. And those who really want to take it you know, take advantage of this program, this series, would probably come every week. Uh, but if it happened to be that you can't be here every week, every Tuesday for the next few weeks, if you miss, that's fine. Just keep coming and keep gaining more um, information and discussions from the future weeks. So that's uh, that. Did, was there anything else you wanted no. to mention? No. Um, <clears throat> now, we also wanted to be conversational. Hi, Michael. Welcome. Sorry, I highlighted you. <laughs> We're going to make sure he has a chair. There's a bunch of chairs outside. In the back. Yes. There, he's going the right way. So we want it to be educational and conversational, OK? And we definitely encourage people to engage in the conversation and to comment and to share in a nice way, and for everyone else to obviously be wait, respectful. Wait. Part, of, part of dating, uh, being in a good relationship, is sticking up for the other side. Can you guys shut up? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay. Okay. All right. So we said that. We definitely encourage your participation in a very nicely manner and very respectful. We would love to hear the guys, the girls, everyone. We, we don't want anyone walking out feeling uncomfortable. Someone made them feel uncomfortable for whatever reason it is. So just be aware. Make sure you're being sensitive to everyone as much as you can. And um, OK, so now let's talk about what's going to be today. So we will speak today about the goal of Jewish dating. By the way, I'm moving my mic. I don't know if you will hear me. Um, so the goal of this series, the goal of Jewish dating. I would like to ask you, we'll start it with a discussion. What do you think should be the, what is the goal of Jewish dating? Okay, marriage. 
Good, yes. Marry a Jew. Marry a Jew. <laughs> That's not even under this category. It's so obvious that I might be going to... To multiply. To multiply, okay. To have kids. Ten kids. I thought that's the goal of marriage. Yeah, he went far. Someone yeah, said exactly. ten. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. You love your wife. Go on a Okay, everyone said marriage and uh, marriage and dating Jewish. Okay. Come on, we want something else though. Something deeper. How do you get there? We said that. Yeah, that's the goal of dating? Oh, you may. The goal, the goal of dating is to have kids? Or oh, the goal of marriage? The goal of marriage, I think, is to have kids. <laughs> Thanks and honey. What else? Anything else? Guys, you know, I'm, I'm sure you have it. Find an equal partner. Say it again, I, I can't. To find an equal partner. Okay, yes, right. good. A real partner. To find common values. Finding the common values. Yes. Okay, that's why we're, we're dating. I wrote a bunch of words here. So. Yeah. <laughs> to keep the Jew Okay, well, the idea of ma why marry Jewish. I'm not dating now. Oh, wrong. That's why marry Jewish. No, you've got to keep the Jewish bloodline. Therefore. So there's Jewish dating and then there's dating Jewish. We asked, what is the goal of Jewish dating, not dating Jewish? Right. Dating Jewish is not. Yes. Right. Okay. And what does yeah. that mean? Is everyone exactly the same? Do you have no, to be the no, same? No, Jew is the same. I mean, no one's the same. No one's the same. You can find someone that can help you grow to be a better person. Grow to ah. be a better person. Okay. Oh. Grow to be a better person. Okay, you got one. It's not just one answer, so we're definitely it's getting, getting somewhere. <laughs> what do you say? All right, I can't hear. I can't hear. All, all answers are correct. Oh, yeah. Any other... Uh, to give to your partner. To give. To give. To give, to give. Okay. Sometimes you got to take to give. Okay. Good. There's a depth behind that too. Making the world a better place, meaning a greater goal than dating itself. Oh. Right, guys. That was deep. <laughs> Sorry? Find someone you're compatible with. Right, find, find someone you're compatible, compatible with. Compatible, yes. right, you don't want to date someone that's going to beat you up for the rest of your life, do you? Okay. What? Yeah. That's a problem. We'll talk about that. <laughs> uh, that's definitely not our goal. Do we, are we looking for... Okay, so I wrote a bunch of words here. And um, obviously the first thing I put, and this is what I thought everyone was going to write, is marriage. Good. We covered that, and yeah. And as funny and as jokey this may seem, um, we're going to be speaking more about the goal and why dating has to have a goal. Because dating to date makes no sense. Someone dates just for dating itself, we're going to be speaking about it. It's like having money to hang on the wall and not use it. It has no use. There's always a next stage. Now what? What's the next thing? If it's just this moment, then it's very much about instant gratification. Everything has to have a goal. If it doesn't have a goal, then it's going to go nowhere. It's only going to hurt you. Okay, so we'll be speaking about that. It's not just the word marriage. We hear the word marriage, we're like, Ugh. It's about having a greater goal than just dating to date. We'll be speaking about that more. Um, yeah, do you want to say a few more points here that I wrote? Uh, um, yes, I would, I would mention also pain-free and not effort-free. So this is something that definitely we'll discuss. That a lot of, you know, I, I, we meet with a lot of people. And unfortunately, a lot of people have interesting experiences, right? Going through dating, not always it's the most positive experience. And a lot of the times, you know, it leaves people hurt and broken and oh, you name it, There's a, the list goes on and on and on. And so that would be one of the things that we would say, the goal of this series, the goal of dating should be that it would be, if it's done in the right way, it should be pain free to help you have clarity, to move on, to be healthy and 
And again, we still need to put the effort, but we'll talk more about that. So that's another point that we definitely will cover and like to mention. Anything else? You want me to go? <laughs> sure. um, okay. Um, we, I think someone mentioned growth, one of you, right? So that was, that was good. That was another thing that we mentioned. Um, and also... Can I just say, it's not just growth because of someone else. Da yeah, the yeah. goal of dating in itself is, and this should be a, a thing, like everything in life is to grow as a person internally and enjoy that growth. So when you sit with someone and you ask big questions, that challenges you. So what are you doing? Yep. What, what, what are you doing with your life? All these big questions that you're facing, they are challenging you and they are making you grow. And also, even when you're not dating, you're growing because it's in your mind. Like, what, what kind of, who am I? What kind of person do I really want? Yep. So part of our goal and the goal of Jewish dating is to understand that there's a growth process as a person, an internal growth, not through, not because of the other person. That happens in a marriage. But prior to marriage, there's an internal growth where you start asking yourself, who am I, where am I, what am I doing with my life? How long do I need to wait for this? Why is it taking me uh, so long to make a decision? Why am I so slow to make decisions? That's growth. So the whole process of dating should be growth internally, even when you're not actually physically dating. And someone should enjoy that, yes. Yeah. Is that really fair to your partner if like, the whole world is Absolutely, it's both sides. 100%. Or like, so you're saying... Not on the expense of your date. Oh, okay. We'll be speaking about that also. Yeah, this is something we definitely will speak because there'll be questions like, you know, oh, we need the dating sometimes and those relationships to gain experience and like, is it fair to do it through someone else? We'll, we'll get into that. That's a bigger, bigger discussion. And the straight up answer is right no. You don't, you don't uh, go to someone and say... Yeah, no. um, like, people tell me this. I am, this is the worst thing that a person could tell me. I'm, I'm dating this non-Jewish girl. Okay, that's the worst thing that someone's done, right? And, and for now, I'm staying with it because it, I need the experience. How can you say that? We hear that, don't and, and Or, but by the way, people don't say that straight up. Do you know what they really say? I'm, we're never gonna get married. Rabbi, we are never gonna get married. It's just a thing right now. Basically, you don't tell that to that girl, right? You're not telling it to that girl. She that you're doesn't going know. She doesn't know. <laughs> you're pretending that you're putting in all the effort and you, but in the back of your mind, imagine going out with someone saying to them, I'm going to go out with you, but I'm never going to get married to you. That's so sad. I, I'm ne right? Isn't that sad? So, um, it's reality a lot of the times. Forget, whether, forget from the religious perspective of that a, a Jew should try and marry a Jew and keep the Jewish people. But even outside of a Jewish perspective, to actually, as a, as a human decency, yep. to date someone with a mindset that I'm never actually going to marry them, and I can't tell it to their face, but in my heart, I say it. So I'm putting on a whole show for weeks on end, months on end, in order to take from that person whatever Using, I can. Yeah. You can see I'm charged by this, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, it's like, you know, I'm, but it really bothers me, because that's what you're, you're using someone. Forget uh, human decency, forget... Judaism right now, just as human decency, going out with someone and saying, in the, in the depth of my heart, I will never marry you. But you are beautiful, I'll tell her to her face, and I'll tell her how great we, our time is together, and how much I love our, our company, and it means so much, but then when I'm speaking to other people, I'll never marry that person. That's, that's, that's painful. And actually that can cause a lot of resentment to the Jewish people. So that's yes. another discussion. You can cause a lot of pain to the Jewish, right? A, in my community, in the religious, very religious community, it's not even, co even a conversation. Will you marry a Jew? Because we're very Jewish, so it's not even a, a, a question. It's like I identify so strongly as a Jew. No one would ask me, would you want this girl? Her name is, she's beautiful, she's great, and her name is Christina. Would you want her? No one asked that to me, because look at the way I look, right? I'm very Jewish, so that's obvious. But, but outside of all that, to be dating someone that you're never even in the mindset of ever being with in the long term, 
is really using them. So we'll be speaking about that. I'm giving you a very extreme example, but imagine somebody who does that by dating to date, even with a Jew. Yeah, yeah it doesn't have to be a non-Jew, right? We're talking about you dating someone. It could be a Jewish girl or a Jewish guy, you know, if it's a girl. And um, you kind of know that it's not going anywhere, but it's still you staying in it for whatever reason. And one side really thinks something is happening, and the other side is like, this is not going anywhere. Now, that being said, it, 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 you know, we understand the challenge of wanting company of course, yeah. and not being alone. But like, like Puya said, it's not fair to do that on the expense of someone else. That's, that's wrong. I want company, so therefore, I'm going to make someone think that they really, I'm into them when I'm not. Anyone else got thoughts about this? Yeah, we would like to hear thoughts. It's not just us talking. Yeah. We're talking from experience of many others, but we'd love to hear, yes, yeah, so Nazi. No, not talking from experience, but like, uh, once you go off the beaten path, you know, it's like, you can't like a non-Jewish boy or non-Jewish girl to a Jewish girl and you see like maybe there are some Jewish girls or some Jewish guys that won't do the same things that you know non-Jewish boys and girls will do for you or vice versa like you get a mixed case and like it's no I'm being serious but you guys like if you think about it realistically I don't know if any of you guys dated someone non-Jew or you know but you don't have that same experience sometimes with Jewish girls because you guys don't put in the same effort, vice versa. And it's so sad to see that like like some Jewish guys and some Jewish girls not putting in the same effort for each other versus like and that they put in the same effort for a non Jewish guy or a girl. It's so sad to see that. And it's like to be honest I've experienced it. I mean, I don't wanna say I've done it but you know, everyone's been in this situation. I'm just saying, it's not good to go off the dare sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge. Yeah. yeah. It is. It's always it's great a challenge. to have expectations, like what you want, you know what the other person wants in the beginning. So it's like, oh, I'm just casually dating. I'm seeing other people. I'm seeing where things go. You know, you're not saying, oh, I'm committed to you. I'm putting all eggs in one basket. It's like, look, I'm dating. Go out a couple dates. So you dates. don't believe in exclusive dating? No, I didn't say that. I said, I said you can go out with a couple of people, right? And then after that, like, okay, look, I don't want this person. I like this person more. I'm going to continue with the That's for sure. So at what point? That's the thing. At what point, point you're going to make the decision? Oh, okay, so we're not talking about that. Absolutely. We're not talking about that. I agree that. with you. No, I'm not Okay. Saying, I think it's not. Well, we're talking about, like, a little yeah. different, <laughs> yeah, maybe a bit more than two, three. It's up to somebody along. It's not right. It isn't right. On the expense of that other person, there's expectations. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, according to Jewish dating, because I was dating... Guys, let's hear Daniel here. I was dating this girl, and after a month, she came to me, and she's like, okay, I want to be exclusive. And that kind of blew me away, because I grew up in Israel, and over there, like... There is no such idea in that culture of being exclusive. It's like, if I'm dating this girl, so I'm dating this girl, and if I meet someone else that, even if I feel attraction to her, I'm not gonna start like hitting or talking to her because I'm dating this other girl. So I was kind of shocked by that idea of like, oh, let's be exclusive. It's and obvious. Meaning you thought that it was I, I felt like, we were like from, from beginning. One. Yeah. And, and it wasn't like, clear to her. the person I am. Like, I have a heart for one girl. I can't go out with three girls at once. Regardless of Judaism or not, but my question is, is like according to Judaism, going out with several girls at once, if you're not like, in, if you're just in the beginning of hey, welcome to the back. Yes. So he's asking if it's fine if someone goes at the beginning with a few people. I mean, I I believe in general that, and obviously it depends on also our culture and what's done on the first day, you know. Like, but uh, in general, I definitely believe that. One or two dates is fine. You're not exclusive yet. <clears throat> okay, but after that. But then after that, it has to be very, very clear. And you know what? And if you are someone that 
you would say, you know, that's so clear to me if I meet someone, you'll have to also match the expectations from the other side so you don't get surprised, you know, like after a month or something. After two dates, you know how the person looks, just one second, you know how the person looks, and you could, at least from an external factor, you can already make that decision of whether... You're attracted enough to wanting to... If it's going to grow, if, it's, if it can grow. I, I always say, between zero and ten, that's how people rate people nowadays, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> but, but between zero and ten, so, um, you know, from that. zero to five, you can never change that. <laughs> zero to five, you can't change it. Let's say like this, zero to five, you can't really change that to make it something between a Bigger, five and ten. Bigger, yeah. But there is a belief, and, and, we, and we will speak about this also, where you can change something which you're like, okay, there's a six, seven here, and you can transform that to the most beautiful uh, really? number, uh, 2,000, right? You can, you can really do transform that, yes. So that's why I believe that one or two dates, you just need to see if there's a, a physical attraction. And, and I don't mean anything more than just talking to them in their face and speaking to them. Much more than, by the way, a picture. Pictures don't say anything. Uh, you know, although they say pictures speaks more than a thousand words. Not when it comes to that, I don't think. <laughs> yes, when it comes to dating, you need a thousand words to get the picture. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Right picture, you know? <laughs> 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 write it down. <laughs> okay, wait a second. Oh, the AC. Open and honest, I think we'll just save a lot of people a lot of time. I say that a lot. I'm Israeli, so I like to be a friend in many ways. So, yes, I, I agree. That's, that's something that should be communicated. Um, wait, was there anyone else I wanted before we move on? Yeah. yeah. I just want to know, like, how important is it for Judaism, like, physical attraction? Like, I know generally everyone needs to be physically attracted to somebody, right? But, like, physical attraction can fade, so, like, in... In will fade. Season. Not can fade, it will fade. It will fade. <laughs> 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 I see that. <laughs> Physical? Yes. yes. No, you want attraction. You can still be attracted to someone who's 50. Yes. Your wife. So it's not going to fade. Okay, wait a second. <laughs> we're, we're having a discussion here. We're having our discussion. <laughs> no, it's good. Shira didn't. We have. Shira has a. Shira says she disagrees. That's fine. But, but what was the question? No, that. Yeah. Like Judaism, like, does it value physical attraction? Hundred percent. You're not allowed to get married to someone according to Judaism if you're not physically attracted to them. Just saying. I didn't say you have to go to certain steps before you get married to them but there is a certain level of attraction that you have to have. And even according to Judaism, you have to, you know, back see in the day, first. you have to see them. You can't do it through someone else. Like, you know, like, thing, like things were, I don't know, like uh, hundreds of years ago, you still had to see that person that you're marrying, you know, like, and decide that you want to marry them. So okay. just to yeah, that. Yeah, okay, yeah. I have a question. What if you're in the middle of a relationship and then you realize you know, maybe even with Tanoja, for example, that I can't, you learn later that, oh, I made a mistake and she's not Jewish and I can't do this. How do you tell it to the person? You don't, have to you, don't. you break up and you say it's, you're not for me. Yeah, but the problem is there is emotional. And it also depends how long it's been. Exactly. <laughs> Very individual, do you remember? Yeah. We had that case recently. You know, it, it, I would say it's a really good question. And again, every question means experience, individual case. There's no like one answer for it all. I hate saying like, oh, this is how the way things should be, because it's really not uh, generally, you know, when it comes to dating and relationships. But we did have recently something, a case like this where someone is dating someone who's not Jewish, they realize after a long time though, <laughs> that, oh, I, I really, I actually want to get more serious and want to, you know, find someone and I'm stuck in this relationship and she's thinking it's, and she's not Jewish and she's thinking that we're probably going to get married one day. Um, so the way 
the, the route he chose, he chose, um, I think, was it that he wanted her to come also? To I told meet? him I would, oh, li I would like to meet her. To meet her. And um, that way, uh, I have a way. I don't, I don't think that if you, by, you know, as coming as, a, as presenting myself as a rabbi, I, I think that I have the confidence to tell her that a date, you know, it, all cultures normally try and marry their own cultures, and eventually, as time goes on, you have children. The differences will be much And the differences than will be more important. And yes. I'll basically convince her that it's, it's only going to get worse if this continues. So, like, from an outside perspective, that can help. But I don't think, by the way, that that question you're asking is only if it's a non Jew. I think that's a personality. Yeah. If you're, it's not only with a non If you're going out with someone which you realize is not for me, how do you break up in a nice way? That's your question. Yeah. Because without. And, sorry? Do you break up with her? Yeah. Now, no, no. He would just like have a conversation. She's I'll have a no, no. I won't break with, up with for him, but no. I'll make. I'll have a serious conversation. That's his business. With her. He has to deal with you know his own relationship. I'll have a. I will never break up for someone. I'll make a decision for oh, someone. Wait. He has to speak for himself. But I will make her have the realization that continuing is not going to be a good idea for it's her. Not going to do right. That's that's the what. main point is, and I'll, I'll just go through this very quickly because it's not really our discussion. Yes, whatever. The <laughs> main point of, is but that. It's, when you get married, that age that you get married and make the decision to get married is the worst time to make that decision. Yeah. But you have to make that decision. The reason is, is because as you get older, you get more immersed in the way that you grew up. So if let's say, um, if you look at synagogues, which type of people are involved with the synagogue? What age group? What, what demographic? Older. Either older or, or kids. Or kids. The only age that's least involved is your yeah. age, right before you get married. And uh, what normally happens is a kid comes out at some point, and then you say, oh, I want that kid to have what I had. I don't want them to go to public school. I didn't go to public school. Or I want them to go to a Jewish Sunday school. That's what I had. I want them to have more Jewish values. I don't like those values that they're getting in the school. Suddenly, you're questioned much more. Life gets changes a bit. So as as you get married and time goes on, you start identifying much stronger with the way that you were actually brought up. And with, with religion, your, and with in, re general. religion in general. Yeah, studies that so that means if them. she's Christian and you're Jewish, interfaith right now doesn't matter. Because you could be both of you not religious. So we're not religious, say. both of us. But as time goes on, we by nature become more religious people. And then suddenly we see our differences. We're like, oh my gosh, we're, we're really not made for each other. And we have seen, I mean, she can have a baby and the next day she's like, I want to raise this baby Christian, what would you say? You know, like, oh, you promised me that this is, it's not relevant. You know, like, you got to deal with life yes. as it goes on, like, so it's okay. different. Can I, can I add but yes. yes. And then, just say, like, let's say she's not Jewish, but he's Jewish, or vice versa, right? Vice versa. And then there comes a the topic of, okay, well, I can convert. You know? Okay. So and there's this whole conversion topic. You know? Right. And, but then it's still the same thing. And do you want someone, imagine this, someone converts for you. Right. Right. Being Jewish isn't so right, simple. By the way, most people in this room are not fit for conversion if they were not Jewish. Because you have to keep Shabbat, you have to, you have to commit <laughs> yeah. to Judaism, right? There's a lot you have to do. And if you ask me why is that fair, I'll, that's another that's whole, it's another whole topic. <laughs> that's not dating right now. That's, a, that's yeah. another whole topic. I have an answer to that. But... If someone, imagine someone makes a big life decision to convert for you. And then, after you, you live a marriage, every single move is because of you. Yeah, one day right? they get mad at you and they're like, you made me do this. I'm you out. made me do this. You know, we see that. Do you know how dangerous like, that I'm is? I'm not doing this. That decision has to come from them. 100%. Can't come because of you. It's very bad. Very, very problematic. It's for anything, by the way. I would ask because this is something that, uh, you know... I've actually heard recently, it's to do with like, oh, I'll change for you in whatever fashion it would be. I'll quit this, I'll do this, I'll keep Shabbat when we have kids. I, I hear all types of things. And you know what? I meet people like two, three years after they're married and then they come back. They're like, I'm having problems. Yeah. He's not really sticking to the words or she's not, you know, like, what do I do? It's hard. Wait, it's not, yeah. So, so matching expectations. Yeah. So my question I'm picking me piggybacking yeah. off of what you were just talking about. So, like, let's say you're on two different levels of religion, 
Yeah, I know what you're about to say. So how, you know, could it work? Could you do it? We're going to get to that. Definitely. I mean, there's a lot to say. I think we're, we're going to be way I mean, general, off topic. The general answer. But general answer is you could be different levels. Everyone but if you're both, we're all different. You know, we're not doing exactly the same sorts of things. More important for you, more important for me. But if you are heading the same direction when it's growth, you know, let's say you're both going up. So it could work. It's not that someone, let's say, grew up religious, stopped here for you, and you grew up nothing, and now you're matching, because you're both not keeping Shabbat, let's say, not keeping kosher also, now we're matching, but you're different directions. You can go this way. And then you're worlds apart, and that happens within a few years sometimes. So to answer your question, if you go the same direction of growth, and you're coming from similar backgrounds, or fine, someone did, used to do, stop doing, already showed a pattern that they're already back on track and they're doing and they're close to what you believe in and what you hold up, no problem. And are you going to tolerate them for who they are now? Right. So even if they are growing, I see that, and I'm growing, but uh, can I tolerate them for the way they are now? No. Not I have an expectation for them to change. No, yeah. what if it's vice versa, that you're dating someone more religious and you're just trying to get onto the you know. I mean, it could, look, they could inspire you. I've seen that in a lot of relationships. It could work. And again, every case to its own individual situation and there are other parameters in, in each case. But when we talk about that, they could, but you can be doing it for them. So if there's certain kind of pressure, because like they want to get married at some point and I'm not even keeping Shabbat yet, it's just too much. It's a lot. And is Shabbat the most important thing to start keeping? Everyone, you know, is different. Everyone I don't want to give like a, a, a one answer fits all because it is different. Yeah. I have a yeah. question because you talked about like as you get older, you start relating more to like the way you grew up and your values and everything yeah. like that, and then culturally as well. So, do you suggest people date and marry within the culture they grew up in? That's regardless. Remember, we had this uh, speaker. Absolutely. They say regardless, and generally speaking. It's obviously easier and nicer if you find someone from the same culture, speak the same language, and everything works out. And like, let's say we're both Israelis, we're both Persian. We're, so there's certain things you don't have to explain. But I would say to that, at this point, I don't believe in being closed-minded to that. Okay. That's not religion. It's a little different. That's right. culture. And culture you can adapt, no problem. It's not anything it's that's... It's not a value and identity. I'm speaking, we're, I'm speaking from experience. I'm Israeli, and he's English. Growing up in very different backgrounds, religious could be the same, but culture is very different. And I have a lot to say about that. We can maybe go, go on that, you know, in the future ones. Yes. <laughs> so we will, but to answer your question, when it comes to that, I'm very into... If they're Jewish, they're normal, <laughs> they're nice, there's, you know... Whatever your list is, they don't have to be Persian, let's say. It could work if they're not. Okay, yeah. Are we ready? Yes. I think we, we want to... Okay, so I just want to um, read you something that I found. Yeah. Um, not from a Jewish source. American Psychological Association. Um, and they speak a lot about marriage, divorce, of course. Family. And there's another organization called the Institute of Family Studies, where they've done a lot of research on on families and children based on the way that they grew up and what, ha what kind of impact divorce has on a family, things like that. So um, this is uh, based on their studies, and I'm going to tell you what their studies are pretty scary. Um, but they say like this, no, this is the article, know that love is not enough. Perhaps the most important lesson relationship research has taught us, and the research is not so exciting. Right? Uh, outside of Judaism, at least. The, right, the relationship research has taught us that is that marriage, like any other commitment, takes a conscious effort to preserve. This is um, said by Nicholas Kirsch, probably a Jew. A couple's therapist, actually, a couple's therapist in Bethsida, uh, whatever. I don't know what that is. So many people do lifelong training in so many things. If you're a golf, golf enthusiast, you go to the driving range a couple of times a week, and that's just for fun. 
If you're a lawyer, you take continuing education. If you're an artist, you take workshops. And somehow there is this the belief that we don't have to work at learning how to be a good couple. It should just come to us naturally. That to me is very backwards. Why? Because golf, money, lawyer is not the value of family. Family should be much more important than making money. And how much time do we invest in trying to study how we can be better lawyers, better, right? But a better mom, no study like that, right? Unless you're desperate. And the earlier you acquire the tools to maintain a relationship, the better. Who estimates that newlyweds who engage in his, in his programs, this uh, uh, psychologist Gottman says uh, that people who engage in his programs are three times more likely to succeed, of course I'll say that, are three times more likely to succeed than those who wait until they need an intervention. What makes love last is cherishing your partner and feeling lucky that you have this person in your life. That act of cherishing is something that couples build and it needs to be worked on. The point is that you can't go into a relationship thinking that all I need is to feel something and then we'll just go with that. Oh, I feel something. I also feel like I should be eating 50 cakes today. But I, don't, I still don't do it because, you know, it might actually hurt. More chameen. Or more chameen. <laughs> or more chala. Right? Because that's going to hurt me. I, obviously, there's things that I feel. It doesn't mean it's good for me. Feeling doesn't mean it's good. So just because you feel for someone, oh my gosh, I love her. Yeah, but she's married and she's a movie star and she's already taken. Right? So just because you feel for someone doesn't mean it doesn't mean that you can now just marry that feeling. That's that's absurd. Okay? A, a feeling is not enough. We've got to learn about achieving beyond that feeling. Okay? Does that does anyone argue with that? Like feelings are enough? Of course not. Feelings can take me to the worst of places. And therefore, just like studying anything else, we should definitely spend our time studying of how to make dating easier, more fun, uh, better, and, and also to pain be free. done pain-free. Yes. yes. So in Judaism, don't they say like love is to serve the other person? What do they mean by cherishing? Is it the same thing, like to serve and help the other person? Because this person said that the, the marriage is like... The way that you achieve love is by focusing on the other person. But that's not what it's for. The point of love is to make you internally grow. Chesed, kindness, and marriage, and all of the things that we do in Judaism is to make you better today than you were yesterday. So that is the goal. The goal is to make you a better person. To correct you. Yes. You correct yourself with someone else. So the, the, the goal of love is to grow. The way you achieve love is by focusing on the positive traits of the other person. Anything else you want to? Um, no, I don't have anything to add on that. I mean, okay. I have a lot. <laughs> oh, I did want to yeah. say actually the research. So this is what the American Psychological Association say. 40 to 50% stay married in America. Yep. So it went down a little bit because less people get married. They, they don't get so married. those that make the decision, maybe it's a little more firm. From those that stay married, of that... 50, 60% that stay married. Listen to this, guys. You might want to hear it. From those that, or maybe not, from those that actually stay married, 15% of women and 20% of men have agreed that they've had extramarital affairs. So how successful is it? Of those that are... Wait a stay second. Stay married on paper, but... And of those that stay married, 20% regret their marriage in the first place. So that's pretty bad for marriage as a whole, which is what we're saying here. And I'm saying this, and I'm saying this not to say, or to say that we should give up hope on life. Oh, yeah, I was about to say, we're not here to discourage marriage, but we're here to really be honest and talk first about everything, and then we're going to build up throughout this, you know, the series. That's and these numbers cool. are obviously much, much uh, better. You don't see these numbers in a religious community where the values are strong. Uh, the numbers are much, much lower than this, okay? So uh, that's just a fact. And when you have religious values and you're strong with them, then it's 
a core in you that you overcome. You, you look at each other and you say, this is all I'm having. I'm not looking for other things. I'm happy with what I have. I train myself to be happy with what I have, even outside of marriage, just in general. Because if you get used to things and you don't like them anymore, then that would happen with your spouse too. So our goal is to actually be internally happy and joyous so that when I actually do get to that moment where I find someone, I'm going to be able to say, okay, not everyone's perfect, but I'm going to be able to focus on the good parts of them. Okay, so there are many other studies that's done about religious people, people that are part of a faith or a community faith, a faith community of some kind. The numbers are much better. So there is hope. Okay, and also it's like somebody who says, so many people suffer. You know what? Let's just give up on life completely and I'm just going to take my life away. Right? That's, that's absurd. Just because some people don't enjoy life, that means we should all give up on life. No. So the same should be with our future and marriage and finding your spouse one day. Don't give up on the institution of marriage because it hasn't worked for so many. Say... It hasn't worked for so many, but I'm going to be the statistic that's going to w make it work. And I'm going to follow all the rules that make you get there. Right. Okay. All right, so I'll move on quickly to the next thing. How long do we have? <laughs> it's fine. We, we're not pressured. We can next week um, we'll continue. Yeah, we'll continue. Stuff. Guys, do you have any questions on what I said? Yeah, yes. before I move on to the next yeah. Not pressured. point. I have a question. Yes. yes. It shouldn't be just based on like, how you feel, like a spark or whatever. But like, at what point should you feel something? After how many days or how long, you know what I mean? Yeah, feelings are real, but to, and, and they, should, they should come after a few dates, maybe even the first date something. If not the first date, second date, it doesn't have to come straight away like there's a feeling of, of excitement about this person. But like after like five dates, you're not excited, but like everything's right, like everything's good. It's like, you shouldn't so it's very individual. We have yeah, to see what, what it is. Is There's it the physical? What's not do. exciting? Is it the physical? Is right. it the conversation? If it's physical, that's not a, right. We have to. It's it's very individual. We have to see. There's a lot to identify before you make a decision. But one thing I'm to, I'm I'm do, do agree. I said it's not. Oh, don't don't dictate your future based on feelings. That's what I'm. Based on feelings only. Only. Yes. You can have feelings and listen to them, of course. Yeah, we're here too. Okay, of course you should listen to your feelings. There's no question about it. But to make that your deciding factor... It's a bit dangerous. And that's the only moving thought. There's no intellect, actually. There's no uh, uh, co uh, compatibility in values. All I care is that I feel my heart is pumping. Whoa, number 10, right? The chemistry is going. Therefore, that's my wife. That's ridiculous. Yes? So, I'm going to ask a question for a friend. <laughs> Asking for a friend. Uh, Guys, that's okay. That's okay. That should be, you okay. know, if you want to feel more comfortable, that should be the thing. And the next few weeks, ask for friends. No I'll problem. Answer. I'm wait, wait, okay with that. Person, I'll answer for a friend. This, this person and this girl have been together for a year and six months. Now he finds out in the last four months, you know, he wants to have kids. Mm -hmm. And now he finds out from her, she doesn't want to have kids, Ooh. or she's not sure. Yes, and they're in both in their the 30s, okay? They're very serious, they're both Jewish, they're both met each other's families, it's already deep. They've traveled together, everything is great. But mm -hmm. he wants kids, she's not sure. They have two different uh, uh, expectations in regards to money and life. So now there's two red flags. What do you recommend in that situation? Do you wait you for that other person? Sure. Sure. No, I, Do not? You need to move on. I, I, I would say, I would answer <laughs> if you let Please. me do this. They're clearly on two different wavelengths now. Right. That's a great question. Um, for a friend. Yes. <laughs> so answer, pass this, this answer to your friend. Um, first of all, I think that kids, having kids, is a deal breaker. It tells you a lot about the whole future until you die. So let's put it this way. I'm not so straight wise. away answering so to that person. I'm saying first to all of you, to all of us, this is something that should be spoken not a year and six months right. later. Let's put it this way. 
Okay? Now we're too late for that. No, I, I know. But that's what I said. This, this is we not know, the answer for them. Us. This is not the answer for them. This is answer for here. You know, like for the people that are here. Wanting to have kids or specific things that are so important for you, you don't wait a year or even a few months. You need to knock it down the first few dates. This is eventually the, what I want. Because if at the beginning something doesn't line up, not worth continuing with that person. That's, that's what I said. Now, with that person, as hard as it is, if that person wants kids and the other one doesn't, there's not much to change. I'm not even talking about money. Because money, I'm, think, uh, I'm thinking, maybe there's a way to work with it. But kids, I would say it's a deal breaker. Even after a year and six months, does that dictate that I would die alone for them? You know, like, they will have to break up. If they, and again, if he's not ready or she's not ready to hear it, that means they're still okay with staying together. So go ahead, you know, they Probably can get married. Probably dating today. Right, if they want to continue that For way. your friend. Yeah, <laughs> but there's not, I would say there's no magic, you know, answer or technique to work with something like that. It's not even of like relocation and, you know, like money to so say, okay, you can make sacrifices. Kids, it's either yes or no. Yeah. It's much harder. It's a very deep question, you know. Great. Yeah. So wise. Mo did you want to add? Promoting my. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Monica. Uh, so, how many values do you feel like you need to align on without being like too picky? That's a great question. Basically, do you have a number, though? basically <laughs> what are red flags? Is that your question? No, no she, she wants to she wants to be like, oh, I don't no? want to be too picky asking like for this and this and this and this. Right, this so what like are the this. things that you should, are deal breakers? What are the red flags that you should just walk away from? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, maybe, maybe you should think about it the other way. I think that's what you were, you were saying, you know. Think of the things that you are that's looking at, yes, and say, I'm not willing to go with this person if he's not these things. And I think it's easier to work sometimes with what's not. Hopefully that's less than what's the other things. Because values, I don't think it's, there's too many. If it's a value, it's a value for you. And again, uh, it, it could be very broad what I'm saying because I don't know the exact you know, details. So we're going to talk about it, but just for a quick idea, every time we say this, but a quick idea is you should be writing down throughout yeah. your dating process no matter how many times you've been dating, uh, things that you would, I mean, these will change. Things that you would like to have and things that you must have. And yes. you should break down, like, you should write down everything that you would like to have and then, and then filter it out. Filter what it out. must and what is gonna be nice, it's a bonus. And then that's easier to have clarity. And then we can discuss then, you know, like, you know, based specifically on what you feel, because every person feels different about what is super important for them. By the way, you realize how so much of this conversation is internal growth, Yeah. right? It's a lot of internal growth. Dating is a tremendous amount. It's taking you on a journey, basically. It's a journey of internal yourself, growth. Figuring out all these things that you, before that you didn't even think of. Like, and oh, marriage even more. Yeah. It's, it continues. It doesn't stop there. You keep growing with the person. Yeah. yeah. Did yes. that help a little bit? Like a little bit. Like I, I've been told like, you should only have like, a top five it could be more I, I don't know I don't like to stick to a specific number that's what I'm saying I like to work with individual okay so here is what no, no. you know I really need here is what a bonus that could be nice and then no questions, right? through that you can really pick what you know we can discuss and say oh what's really important like lifelong important you know, and then really identify those things. It could be six. This isn't your time to pitch your business. I wouldn't say sacrifice certain things that's super important. I, I, don't, I don't like the five. Let it finish. But whatever. I'm not telling that anyone else says anything wrong. I'm not saying 20 either. <laughs> you know, like, okay. 
what's happening? <laughs> I think it was such a... Is this part of the series? Wait, this is just my opinion, but I feel like everyone should have some... You're, you're in the video, by the way, just saying. <laughs> we'll cut this cut out. I feel like everyone should really have some like major deal makers and breakers. Like what's really important to you that's like a really like major deal maker and breakers. Didn't we say that? Like, like, like for me, it's like, for example... No, no, I like that. Continue. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. <laughs> I just had to share my opinion. Sorry, guys. I got a massage in the middle of my class. It's unbelievable. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, thank you. Clap! <laughs> you didn't know you signed up for a comedy show tonight, too. This was awesome. Um, Okay, let's go for... Okay, Michael. That's as far as it goes so, with me and Brian. <laughs> so the question I had is... Oh, and Puya, you have... There's a muscle in the back. Yeah, so, yeah and there's... So, so really fast, you two are happily married, and it's, it's working oh, out, okay. and it's going really well. We're working. No, of course, but that's Towards the thing, is like, when we're, we're early in our dating, right, and we're looking for the right partner, because if you look at divorce rates, why do you single women own the most houses? Because they've been divorced and got them from their husbands. Like, oh, as men, I'm oh, serious, I'm serious. Well, we're, our assets are gone, and the, the women are going to get full of kids. I'm, I'm serious about this. And so, so like, you have a happy marriage. What qualities, like, make your marriage last and, and make it continue to grow together? And what qualities can you look for in a partner or the people we're dating to get those same things? I don't, I don't want to ever get divorced. I want to get married once for life. That's I'm it. into that. So let's, 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 I hope that everyone wants that. I want to know what they're doing post marriage because a lot of people I know, oh, we're in love, boom, divorce. And it was like, oh, come from good families, have money, whatever, you name it, they got it. Done. Adios. Marriage is dissolved. So I, I don't want that to happen. So I'm wondering what in your marriage, like, can we learn from and gain from your knowledge? Is, Go for it. Like, yeah. Awesome. How do we work through our challenges, the would-be challenges, recognize that not everything going to work well, not always you're going to have money. How would you work towards making things work? And I feel like the, the idea of how do we make it work versus how do we break this whole thing? Because I, I believe in this is something I've seen. People are just too used to of, oh, this doesn't work, I'll go with something else. You know, like, it's just too easy. We're so used to it and everything is disposable. Marriage can be too. And so the idea is like, no, if we're in it, we're gonna make it work. I feel like it's also an Israeli thing. You're like, you're, you're in it. There's no such a thing failure. You're gonna make it work. Now, I'm not recognizing that there are, not, there are no like failure in marriage. I can say, I have a sister, she's divorced. Is that a failure? No. It, we celebrated when she got her get and she got divorced. It was meant to be. But everything with the right mindset, at that point she had to do that. But does that mean that every marriage shouldn't work? You know, every two, you know, two people shouldn't work to work towards perfecting their relationship? Absolutely, they have to. It's not gonna come like that. And, and I'm not here to discourage, obviously. I'm here to encourage the work and the excitement of overcoming things together. And this is just I, my I just want to add one thing, very important, yeah. um, that you were asking also, like, what practical tools can I use to make sure that it will succeed by me? And I'll tell you that, um, and I say this at weddings normally when I do a wedding, yeah. that one of the blessings we say is, uh, you should be as happy as Adam and Eve in garden, uh, in, in the garden of, uh, of uh, Eden. Eden. Yeah. Sorry, I can't even. Uh, right, you should be happy as Adam and Eve in the garden of, of Eden. And the question is, what does that mean? How can we expect you to be happy with your newly married wife as you could be with, you're not in the garden of Eden, you're in LA. It's not garden of Eden, right? It's not heaven over here. So how, what does that mean? What is that prayer? Because from there, I'll, you'll be able to know something very powerful. And the answer is that just like when Adam and Eve, it was only Adam and Eve. It was only them two. If you're in a relationship where you look at each other and you say, it's only us two, right. it's me and you, then that relationship will succeed. Mm -hmm. But if you're in that relationship and you're like, oh, but what about that person? What about maybe that person? Like oh, your that eyes was... are everywhere. If your and eyes are everywhere, then your marriage the won't succeed. Also. 
So I, I believe that that applies to your life also. At your age, right now, you can grow in your marriage, not only when you were married. And that is by you know, training myself to say that I'm happy, these are the parents I were given, and they're the best parents I could have ever got. From, you know, if they were very difficult to me and they were abusive, I needed to go through that to grow as me, and I'm, I have the power to overcome those challenges, whatever it is. But to be able to look at my own internal life, that's why I said, again, dating is a lot about internal growth. It's a lot about internal growth, and marriage too, where a person's able to reflect, even outside of dating, just in life. I have this amount of money, and I'm, I'm trying to make more. That's okay. But I'm truly happy with what I've been blessed with. If you're able to look at life in that way, you'll look at your spouse that way. And in the religious community, we really focus on not looking at other people um, and not allowing myself to look at other people in a sexual fashion. So, um, you know, personally, I'd ride maybe on a bike along the promenade of the beach, but I wouldn't go on the beach where there's people dressed not so appropriately, if you get what I mean. Or you wouldn't see me working out in a yoga uh, thing. You know, there's places I wouldn't go because I don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm looking at other women in, in a provocative way. I can look at people, men and women, very comfortably and talk to them, but not in a way where I'm looking at them at, 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 in a way that instigates um, any form of attraction, physical chemistry. Because every human being has physical, I'm being honest with you and me and every human being, there is a way to awaken that physical chemistry, but that's just physics. That's just chemistry in the body. But we can control that. So if a, if a person's able to get married and look at his spouse and say, I'm gonna focus on the good of you and I'm gonna do everything I can to not allow my mind to focus on anybody else. Oh, wow, look what she's wearing. Or look what that person's wearing. No, I'm gonna make my life a focus on my inner self and how grateful I am for who I am. That will, yeah. that will change your And you your always feel like you have everything. You know, we've heard that. It's like, Samech Samech such, That's why I'm saying these Jewish values are so important to making a marriage work too. Yeah. Hopefully that answers yes. your question. Uh, what was your name again? Uh, uh, Cole. 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 Cole, that's right. Um, so, pre-marriage, while you're still on the dating scene, how do you organize your life to maximize this outcome of like a uh, marriage relationship? Like, so, you, you're asking how do you get from dating to marriage? Like, um, what's the process to get there, or how do you move what towards... Do you, what do you do in the beginning to, like, even start that journey? Do you want to say? I mean, I will let you get started. Okay. So, so yeah, let me see if I understand, then, if everyone else understands what you're asking. When you go out on a date, how do you get yourself in the right mindset that you're looking for someone, not just to date, but to eventually be someone that you marry? Is that the question? Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, kind of. Um, wait, wait, no, uh, Maybe don't clarify. feel bad, Maybe clarify, don't more. feel bad. It's like, good that... Yeah, don't like feel there bad. Are certain, there are certain, like, things you can do to, like, increase the chance that, like, the person you even start dating is, like, good for you in the first place, rather than someone who's bad for you. I don't know. Yes. I don't know what the answer is. Right, what are the tools that you can do to know, ahead of the game as well, and in the dating itself, at least in the first date, to know if this person is going to be for you or not, or yeah, if it's right. not? Yeah. Did you also mention, just so, to clarify for myself as well. It's a great question. Um, yes. So do you also mean before you meet the person? Or once you meet the person? I, uh, I guess both. That's like, yeah, that's a big answer. Uh, I mean, because we have a whole thing. What we do before yeah. we meet someone, <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, you can go ahead. You meant both. Yeah, so um, what, what we're actually talking about right now, and I think this is so important, is the mindset that a person has. Cole, this is really important, that you should be able to have this mindset in your, in your mind that I'm not just looking for a body mate, I'm looking for a soul mate. That mindset alone could solve tremendous amount of problems. I'll give you an example, okay? If you went on a vacation, Cole, you went on a trip to Israel, and you saw this really nice girl in Tel Aviv, and you're like, wow! Now, uh, you go out on a date. Should you even go out on that date if you know that she's never going to move to America and you're never going to move to Tel Aviv? No. 
people might people might say, why not? Go out, have fun. It's true. You have fun, do whatever you want. But at the end of the day. So that's dating today, no problem. At the end of the day, exactly. Yeah. If you're dating to to not just for dating itself, but dating with intention, then you wouldn't want to do that. You wouldn't want to put yourself in a situation where you have fun temporarily, but then it comes on the cost of being upset when you have to go back. Right? Why put yourself in a, temp in a moment of temptation for no reason, which is not even going to get you anywhere? So, so what's the opposite of that, putting yourself in a moment of temptation? Holding the temptation and, and focusing for the right person that is going to be compatible. Don't, don't jump straight into the, any person that looks good and say, oh, wow, let me date with her because she is really attractive. And I'm talking for so a guy to a girl, but it can go like another way. Focus on is like you're saying, like, I go to the beach and I'm more likely to, in Israel, I'm more likely to find someone who's not compatible with me. Like, Why? I yes, because... I to find the opposite of that. Someone who is, like, they might be if they're American and they're coming back to LA and they're going to be with you here, then maybe yes. But if I they mean, you have a little you, bit of a conversation, you could. You, you know, could talk you to them. To them. You speak to them, you find out, oh, you're here for long term, you're coming back, you know. You find out, I think, when it comes to location, for example, if it's a deal breaker and you know you're not going to stay in Israel and they're not going to go, then you find out from the very beginning. You're assuming, oh, if they're American, then there's something to talk about. Maybe they are coming back. If they're fully Israeli, maybe they might not even understand you, you know. But, you know, that, that's pretty much what we're talking about, where there is something there that could work versus... You know, the circumstances won't change. So then after a few moments of speaking with them, you realize, okay, it's not worth investing. The kind of question you'll ask when you're dating to, with intention is a bigger question also. It's like, will this be the mom of my kids? That's a different question. You don't ask them, you ask yourself. You're asking yourself. <laughs> <We're>, Clarifying. <laughs> you probably might ask, be asking that question to yourself, but... In a, on a serious level, on a serious note, right? When you're dating for a soulmate, you're, really asking, you're asking bigger questions. And, and in what situation is that more likely to come up, though? Like, not at a beach in Israel, but like... Oh, you think like, where? Yeah. Look, I'll tell you where it won't happen. When a 16-year-old realizes uh, about, you know, he's in college, and he realizes he had some class, and he realizes about, you know, how things work, and he gets excited, and, uh, and he looks for a girl in college at the age of 16. Do you get, do you get where? That's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to cause excitement and fun and hype, but then it's only going to cause more like, it's very highly going to cause breakup and problems no, later I, on. I totally time. understand. These are all the negation of it. Right. Like, what is the, the affirmation of like, what the values you're saying? Like, so the affirmation is if there is compatibility, there's not just, oh, we are physically attracted. There are similarities. It can work. This has a future to it. There's, yeah. right? It, my point is, you're not just going to date someone and say, okay, can we physically be together? You're asking, can this, are there, you're going to date, you're not going to go straight into intimacy. The, the, these are the points that um, really indicate to you that you're, that you're really going to take this person seriously, find out who they are. And I hope, I hope this helps. There's many yeah, other more about I, them. I would like to add body, also, you know, in terms of, sometimes people say, so where do I find, you know, that, where could I find? I mean, look, where do I find? No one can answer that question. I wish I could, then I would be, uh, you know, I'd be a prophet. <laughs> I'll tell you all, who are you going to marry to? Like, no one can do that. Come to um, you No, I can't say that either. But what I do I say is you put yourself question. out there in a way where you would like and hope to find that person. And, and places that you find yourself you probably would like to find your spouse. You know, if someone comes to Jewish events because they're looking for, you know, and they know they're looking for someone Jewish, makes sense. They're doing their part to get closer to their goal of hoping to find someone Jewish. Oh, that's that hopefully true. that has, you know, those values. You're not, if you know, let's say, you're not the type to go and find a girl at a bar. So then don't go to the bar and look for someone and party like everyone because, you know, this is not what's going to get me what I'm looking for. Or, you know, if you like the apps, no problem. You can also use that. There are ways to find people. And it's a work of art, you know. It's like something that people work on, you know, sometimes years till they find the right person. But I think being out there is important. Coming out to Jewish events, if looking for someone Jewish, obviously, is your thing. 
then that's another thing. Shabbat dinners, people, uh, you know, it's been very successful for people to meet. Things like that. So I hope we answered you a little bit. And if we didn't, we can also clarify after this once. Yeah. Uh, we but wrap Shira up. was saying a very important point, which is don't be in a place where you don't ex want your wife to be one day. Right? If you're, if you're looking for a spouse and you want your spouse to not be the type of girl that's in a club at 12 o'clock at night oh, at, on, the main, on the main dance floor, then don't be there. Don't you be there. Don't be in a place where you don't want your spouse to be. Be in a place where you want your spouse to be, where your future will be. So the main, the main answer to the question really, in a positive sense, is be in a place where you will want your soulmate to be. Don't go to a place where you don't want your soulmate to be. Okay. Also, yes. also to be the person that you want your wife to be. Like, right. I think there's a lot of guys I meet that are out... Like, oh, I want a girl that's never been with any guy. They're out like... Hundred percent. Very important. Oh, like also. such a hypocrite. Like, what do you want? Hundred percent. I can't even agree more. <laughs> you know, I've heard that before. No, and, they, uh, say, they say that guys are allowed to, girls aren't. Oh, you heard that before? That's, that's disgusting. So the Absurd. Yeah, uh, we agree with you. We definitely... That, that doesn't make sense. You can't have expectations from the other side. Also, religious expectations. I hear people that tell me, I want someone who is either keeping Shabbat or keeping kosher, are you doing it that you want someone, why would they want you? Like, honestly. So, you know, we all need to be honest about who we are, not try to be what we're not. We can aspire to be something, we can grow, and we can hopefully find someone that's in the same level, that's also getting there. But you can't expect them to be better than you. That's for sure. Um, okay. Puya, Puya wanted to quickly ask a question before. One last question. We Go do on. need to wrap up. <laughs> I, I see the time. Rabbi Jack, you said earlier, like, you should be making a list while you're dating of, like, not necessarily, like, pros and cons, but, like, you said, filter out, like, the, some of the stuff that are not valuable to you and, like, some of the stuff that... So, like, what... Not, not only while you're dating, throughout the dating process, so till the moment you get married, right, you should always be writing down, even if the, there's a breakup, and learning every year to go through this list that you make, what's important for you, and, Things and, might change. And, and right. what you must have. Yeah. And make that definition of what you must really have. Like, this is really like, if I don't have this, uh, my relationship can never work. Okay, gotcha. Was that, not, was it's that? not in, in a specific date, it's as an overall thing. Yeah. yeah. All right, wow. Thank you so much, everyone. Look, we've had like literally three pages to go through, and we have so much. We only did like half. <laughs> I'm just saying, half of the first page. but. That means, and I'm liking it, that means that people are sharing, you're open, and because a lot of the learning is done through discussing. It's not just, that's exactly what I said at the beginning. We don't want to sit here and just give you a formal talk. That's not the point. You can go on YouTube and listen to anyone you want. The goal of this discussion is obviously we're sharing what we know and the Torah wisdom and from our experiences with working with people. Right. But also, Part of the learning is your experience, is your feelings, is your, you know, comment uh, that can help other people even have clarity. So I really, really do appreciate everyone that step in, everyone that share. By the I'm way, when forward. we say conversational, we mean with us, not with the person next to you on TikTok <laughs> and sharing him your feed or whatever. <laughs> We're talking about us, about it. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, okay, you, you got the memo, so we're very excited. We have lots to cover, and we're excited for next week. We're obviously here for questions, but the class formally left. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm excited for more.